Hey guys, welcome back. So today, I'm working on two steel leaf blowers. Uh, the one on the right is a BR400, and on the left, we have a BR380. Now, neither one of these belong to me. They actually belong to a friend of a friend. And the machine here on the right, he's actually owned since new. I think it's at least 25 years old, and I'm told it has always run pretty well. Uh, but recently it has developed a problem where after you shut it down, the carb floods out and it actually fills the cylinder with fuel. So that one, I think I know what's going on there. Hopefully it'll be a quick fix. Uh, the one on the left, actually he purchased on Facebook Marketplace when his older one started acting up. This one, he says he has never heard run. And he also added it has spark, it has fuel, and it has compression. So I guess the question in my mind is, why doesn't it run? So let me get set up a little bit better. I'm gonna start just by pulling each of these over and just validate kind of where things are at, and we'll go from there. So let's start with the BR400. This is the one that supposedly runs and then floods out after you shut it off. So there is fuel in the tank. It does not smell bad. Now, one of the big clues here is the fact that this, it's not a gravity fed system. We have the tank on the bottom and the carburetor up here. So if the needle and seat weren't working and it was gravity fed, then that could definitely flood out the engine and fill the cylinder with fuel. You know, in this case, once the engine's off, fuel should not flow even if the needle and seat aren't working. But the fact that it is tells me that most likely the tank is building pressure. So if these holes here are plugged on the cap, that's where it vents. And, you know, the tank's proximity to the engine might be heating the fuel up, causing it to build pressure in that tank. And that's what's causing the issue here. So that's my best guess at this point. Anyway, let's try starting this one real quick. It looks like we're already in the on position, so we'll turn the throttle up a little bit and give it some choke. Let's see if it starts. First pull. Okay, well, it started first pull. You know, it was running quite rich, but it was getting better as the engine warmed up. So this one, at least on the surface, seems to be in pretty good shape. So let's try starting this one. We'll do the same thing. Put it on choke. Check the tank. Actually, I can see the fuel right there, but let's just see if it smells bad. And no, it smells like good fuel. So let's see, we're already in the run position. We'll turn the throttle up a bit and try to start this one. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, I was not expecting that. I mean, the owner says he has never heard this engine run or even kick over. So I'm thinking maybe user error. Not sure. Anyway, it sounded good. So this one, I think we need to get outside, try it out. 
make sure there's nothing that I'm missing here. Anyway, as far as this one goes, you know, the issue might be hard to reproduce. You know, I'm thinking that we should just pressure test the tank. So I need to get a little bit better access to the fuel lines. We'll hook up the Mighty Vac, send some pressure into that tank. And if the vent's working, it should not build pressure. So let's get the air box off. Maybe we'll get these bolts out as well and just get better access to what we need and run some tests. So I haven't worked on one of these before. You know, usually I fix generators, but I'm not afraid to try something new here. So with this out of the way, what does that give us? It looks like we have access to two bolts right here. Looks like some Torx bits are required. So we'll get those out. Then the air box should come out of the way. And I'm thinking at that point, we might have the access we need to the fuel line. It's looking like a pretty simple setup here. There's no purge bulb and no return line. So there's only one fuel line running from the tank up to the carburetor. So let's get that off. Yeah, did you see that? When I pulled the fuel line off, the fuel kind of jumped out like the tank was under pressure. So I think we're on the right path here. So I don't know if you can see this. I just walked over to the bench to get my pressure tester and you can see the fuel, it's actually spilling out and that should not be happening. The tank should be venting right now and not allow the fuel to climb up to the top of this tube like we see. So if I loosen the cap, we should see that disappear. And we do. So I don't even need the tester, right? I mean, we just tested it. If I lock the cap tight and give it a little time, we'll see the fuel appear there again. And that's ultimately why this is flooding out because the needle can only withstand so much pressure before the fuel pushes past and goes into the engine. So, you know, let's just test it anyway and see how much pressure it can actually build. So right now we're starting at zero and I'm pumping some air into the tank. And it's a pretty big tank, so it might take a few pumps to build pressure here. And right now, it looks like we're at about two PSI, so let's pump a little more. And it should be zero. I mean, really anything above zero is gonna push fuel up out of the tank. Now we're at three PSI and it's holding pretty steady. So yeah, definitely just an issue with the cap. It's not releasing pressure. So let me just loosen the cap and we should see this needle drop and maybe hear it as well. Yeah, so it just released the pressure and we're back at zero. So there's something wrong with the cap. Let's get the cap out of there. See if we can take it apart any and figure out why it is not venting the way that it should. Actually, I'm going to put the brakes on taking this apart. You know, the more I think about it, the more I think I'm kind of going about this the wrong way. This cap most likely has a check valve in it to allow air in so the tank doesn't build a vacuum. And... You know, if you think about it, you know, a machine like this, it frequently gets tipped and the fuel splashed around. So if this was a vent that freely vented in both directions, you'd lose a lot of fuel through the cap vent. So I'm thinking this is by design. And the max pressure we build is only three PSI, which really isn't a lot. The carburetor should easily hold back eight PSI, if not more. So let's 
pressure test that and make sure the needle is holding. So this will be the same test as the tank. I'm just going to add some pressure and I want to see that it holds at least eight PSI. And yeah, it seems to be holding eight PSI without issue. So let's bring it up a little more. There we're at about 14 and it's holding steady. How about a little bit more? 18 PSI. No issues holding that pressure. So that is quite a bit of pressure. So I take back what I said earlier, you know, about this flooding over when the engine is shut off due to the tank being overpressurized. The needle seems like it's more than capable of holding that three PSI back. So what I'm thinking now is that you know, the issue that was reported was that it runs fine, he shuts it down, and he can't restart it. And when I just started it, it seemed like it was running really rich. So I'm thinking those needles are out of adjustment. And it's good enough to run it, but when you shut it down, there's just so much fuel in there that the spark plug most likely can't spark. It just gets too wet. So I'm actually going to put this back together. I'm not going to touch anything right now. You know, I want to get it running again, maybe just test it as is, see if we can reproduce the issue. And then we'll make some adjustments, see if it gets any better. Now, I guess the other thing I noticed too, let me see if I can get this out. This appears to be a clone carb. You know, it should say Walbro right there, and it doesn't. So that, I guess, is something to keep in mind as well. The OEM carbs, a lot of times they come preset and you don't have to adjust them, but clone carbs, that's not really the case. These might need adjustment out of the box. So yeah, anyway, I think that's the plan before putting this back together. You know, this is quite a mess and I think I'm gonna dig in a little bit deeper. Just remove the bolts for this orange plastic piece. We'll get that out of the way, clean up some of the mess and put it back together. Might need to remove the starter recoil too. Yeah, so a few more bolts. The plug surprisingly doesn't look terrible and it's actually dry, at least at the moment. It is a BMR6A NGK brand. So, you know, I guess while we have it open, let's just rotate the engine, see if any fuel comes out of there. Now, this wasn't the main problem, but I do know the owner at least once pulled the plug. He pulled the engine over and he saw some fuel come out. You know, how much? Not sure. Yeah, it's pretty dry in there right now. Nothing coming out. Yeah, I'm just looking down the spark plug hole and it looks dry. There's no puddle of fuel or anything. So that's a good sign. So WD-40 works great for cleaning up oily messes like this. Surprised at how dirty it is though. I don't see why it should be like this.
So I think while we have easy access here, let's get the carburetor back on. So my son has already been using this for a while and you can see this is actually the better of the two and there's a lot of oil and stuff burning off of that exhaust. So I think I'm gonna give it a second. We'll let it burn off a little bit more, restart it and just try it over here. You know, the engine sounded really good so I don't think it's gonna have an issue blowing these leaves around. And then we'll get out the other one, the one that sounds rich and try the same.
All right, very nice. This machine sounds really good and surprisingly seems to be very capable. So yeah, no more smoke, or I should say just a little bit. So most of that oil is burned off. Uh, let's try the other one. Uh-oh. Yeah, this one's definitely not very happy. It is stalling out, and when I pull the trigger, it just kind of doesn't do a whole lot. You know, it does eventually come up to speed, and it actually sounds good at high speed, but the low speed, I think it's way too rich. At least that's what I'm going with, and that's most likely why it's flooding out. So, again, I'm going to use it like this if I can, and then we'll shut it down, try restarting it, and see if it does restart. So let's try getting it going again.
So the high speed ran pretty well for a couple minutes and then it started to sound like it was getting too much fuel even at high speed. Uh, the low speed for sure has problems. You know, the high speed might have problems. But if I fix the low speed, we're probably gonna have to retune the high speed. Anyway, this plug is quite hot. And I'm guessing we're gonna see a wet plug in there. And of course it's raining out now. There's nothing worse than trying to blow wet leaves. They don't, they don't really go anywhere. So yeah, the plug actually looks pretty good. You know, if I'd been a little faster taking it out, I'm willing to bet it would have been wet. Let me just turn the ignition off, pull the engine over, see if there's any fuel in there. No, it's not flooded. At least the cylinder isn't literally flooded with fuel. So I'm gonna put this plug back in. I'm willing to bet that it will start now. Hot. Chokes off. Ignition's off too, let's turn it on. I'll give it a little choke, which might be a mistake. Yeah, so plug, I'd say, is not sparking. And I'm willing to bet it is it is wet again. Yeah, it actually doesn't look too bad. Let me just blow that out with some air. All right, chokes off, ignition's on. Yeah, now it's sparking again. Let me give it a little throttle. It's too much fuel. All right, so let's try making some adjustments. I'm gonna start with the low speed. I'm actually gonna bring the idle speed up a little and we'll make those adjustments. We'll find a sweet spot where it wants to run well and then we'll rev the engine out and adjust the high speed. Gonna start just by seeing where the low speed jet is set at right now. You know, I don't know what the default setting should be, like it's a starting point. You know, if I don't know, usually around one and a half turns. So this one, it's one, just one turn. That's not a lot actually. So let me set it to half a turn and let's see where the high speed jet is. about a turn. So neither one seems excessive here. So it might be due to the fact that it's a clone carb. You know, maybe we have other issues here, I'm not sure. Well, let's just start it again. We'll see if we can get anything better out of the low speed.
No issues with it stalling when idling. The high speed kept running well. It didn't sound like it was getting too much fuel. So I'm gonna let it sit here for about two or three minutes and we'll try to restart it. Well guys, that's pretty much a wrap. The newer machine, the one here on the right that supposedly had no signs of life, I thought was gonna be the main story here. Instead, it ran perfect. I didn't have to do anything to it. The carb is running the machine well. So yeah, I guess the main battle here was this machine, which wasn't too bad either. Even though it's a clone carb and it was running the engine poorly, with some adjustments to those needles, it's now idling well and running at high speed without any issues. So yeah, overall, pretty impressive. You know, I've never used one of these machines before as far as the BR series goes, and I wasn't expecting much because of the size of that tube, but it actually is a very competent machine and had no issues clearing those wet leaves. Anyway, I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching. All right, not so fast. You know, I thought I was done because after adjusting these needles, I could get the engine to idle real nice and rev up without issue. So I called it, concluded the video, and well, fast forward to the next day, and I brought the BR400 back outside and used it for another half hour without any issue. So at that point, I called the owner and told him to come pick up his machines. And a few days later, while en route, I decided to start both of them just to make sure. And the BR380, no issues. The BR400 though, had issues. It wouldn't idle. So I brought the idle speed up, tried adjusting that low speed needle. And after a bunch of fiddling, I finally got it to idle, but it wasn't happy about it. And then I found the other issue, which is that the engine would not rev up at all, despite adjusting this needle really in any position, the high speed one, would not rev up. The only thing that would make it rev up is choking the engine almost all the way. So yeah, we have bigger issues here. I think I know what it is, but before I say any more, let's just try starting it so you can see exactly what it's doing. So I'm gonna turn the ignition on, give it a little bit of throttle, not too much because it's not gonna wanna accelerate. And of course we'll put the choke on. So it's a lot harder to get it to do anything now. So it might take a bit to get it going. All right. That's what it does. Let's try it one more time, see if it'll idle.
And that's pretty much all it does. It will not run with the choke off. It will not idle. It will not accelerate. So yeah, we've got issues. No adjustments I make to the carb seem to fix it. So there's a few things externally that could cause a symptom like that. So I wanted to cross those off the list. You know, the first thing was to remove the spark arrestor because if that's clogged up, it's gonna restrict the flow through the engine and cause a similar symptom. So with that off, it made no difference. So I also swapped out the gasket between the carburetor and the intake just to make sure we weren't sucking air instead of air with fuel. And that made absolutely no difference. Just to make sure I put another carb on, this is a known good carb, absolutely no difference. And I tried a different plug and a different fuel filter absolutely no difference. So the last thing I just did was just to test this fuel line. I used the Mighty Vac to pressurize it just to make sure there were no leaks in this line. Because if there are, that would cause it to suck air and also cause the engine to run extremely lean like we're seeing now. And that made no difference at all. So what I think is going on here is that we have a bad crankcase seal. You know, this is a two stroke engine. A four stroke with a bad seal just leaks oil. A two stroke with a bad seal runs poorly. And the fact that we had a ton of oil down here earlier, I think was a dead giveaway. Now, the carb was running rich. So my hope was that some of that or all of that was just coming out of the exhaust and kind of landing on everything. But now, given the way that it's running, I don't think that was the issue. Either we have a bad crank seal a bad seal at the base gasket, or even a crankcase seal could be bad. You know, so that's something we're gonna test in a minute. Now, if this was a four stroke engine and had a bad seal, it would just leak oil. The engine would actually run fine. A two stroke functions very differently. There are no valves. So you have to have a sealed crankcase for it to work properly. Uh, the way it works is that when the piston goes up, it builds a vacuum in the bottom end of the engine. And when the piston reaches a certain point in its travel, it opens up a port, that vacuum pulls in a charge of air and fuel into the bottom end. And when the piston goes down, it then pressurizes that air fuel mix, a port opens up and allows that pressure to go into the cylinder where it ignites and the process repeats. So if the crankcase leaks, what that means is that Instead of pulling a charge of metered air and fuel through the carburetor, it's pulling just air from somewhere else without any fuel or oil. And that's gonna cause the engine to run poorly and eventually burn up. So I'm gonna test it, I'm gonna pressure test it just to see if we are leaking. Uh, before I even do that though, I'm gonna test the compression. I'm gonna get the compression tester on there. You know, the compression feels good to me, but I just wanna make sure we're not dealing with a top end issue and kind of cross that off the list. And then we'll check the crankcase for that leak. So one important thing to note when testing an engine this small, your compression tester, it needs a Schrader valve down here where it screws into the cylinder. A lot of compression testers have that Schrader valve up on the gauge and for larger engines, it doesn't matter quite so much, but for something this small where it's compressing such a small volume of air, you need to have the Schrader valve close to the cylinder or else you'll get an inaccurate result. Anyway, let's test this. I've got the throttle set to wide open so we can get the most accurate read here. And on a two stroke, you want at least 100 PSI for the engine to run well. So I'm hoping to see at least 100. You know, if we have a healthy piston and cylinder, then we should see closer to 150 PSI. Yeah, and just a few pulls we're pretty close to 150. So there's no issue with the top end on this. So I think we do have a problem 
with the crankcase not sealing. So for the pressure test, we need to seal off the intake manifold as well as the exhaust. And to do that, I'm just gonna use some rubber from a tube placed strategically on either side. So I'm gonna actually use the carburetor to do that. You know, we'll just put it kind of like that, bolt it back on and do the same on the other side. So they do make specialized tools for doing this, for adapting the spark plug to something where you can apply pressure or pull a vacuum. You know, I don't have that tool, but the compression tester adapter works just fine. So that's what I'm gonna use. Connect that to the Mighty Vac. And I'm gonna pump it up to about eight, maybe 10 PSI and see if it can hold that pressure. Actually, I went a little bit past, so we're close to 11 PSI. And it's holding very steady. So I'm gonna rotate the engine just a bit. See if we find a bad spot on the seal. And now we're holding very steady at 11 PSI. So that's good, but it's also bad because that doesn't explain why this engine's running so poorly. So let's check the vacuum, see if it can hold a vacuum. Now this gauge, it's PSI for pressure and inches of mercury for vacuum. So we need about 15 inches of mercury to equal about seven or eight PSI. So we're gonna pump it up to 15. So we're just at 15 now, and you can see we have a severe leak. It's already down to about five inches of mercury. So yeah, that's the problem. This engine cannot hold vacuum, which means basically unmetered air is getting sucked in from somewhere. And that's, that would cause the problem we're seeing. So, yeah, I guess, you know, as far as which seal is bad, it's going to be kind of hard to tell. If it was leaking pressure, we could spray soapy water and find exactly where it's leaking. You know, in this case, it doesn't leak pressure. It doesn't hold a vacuum. And that's usually a sign of a bad crank seal. So, you know, given the symptoms, it's most likely a crank seal. But... If I hadn't just done this test, my money would actually be on the base gasket because if this seal was leaking, then the mess would really be contained in here and the oil would drip out and kind of go down the front, not all over here like we're seeing. And I actually saw a lot of oil around the base of this jug. So let me get you in there and show you that. I'm not sure how well you can see this, but if you look at the bottom of the jug, right where the writing is, all the way down to the base gasket, it's just covered in oil. You know, it's nice and shiny. The bolts have oil on it. And if you look around the corner, we have more oil and oil kind of coming down the side here. So just based on the visual, you know, I would say it's the base gasket that's the problem. You know, of course the test kind of suggests otherwise. So yeah, I think I'm gonna order a kit that has everything we need but I am gonna start with the base gasket. We'll put a new one in, we'll do the same test, 
see if we can pull a vacuum. So I'm just double checking my work. You know, on the vacuum side, we are definitely leaking fast. On the pressure side, I didn't really give it enough time. So I'm gonna try this again. I pumped it up to 11 PSI and it is dropping slowly. I mean, right now we're at 10 and a half. Now we're at 10. So it is a very, very slow leak on the pressure side, but the fact that it's leaking on the pressure side is good because we can now spray it with soapy water and maybe locate where the leak is coming from. Because, I mean, it could be an engine issue, but it could also be one of these seals that I used to plug the engine. And yeah, actually, I don't know if you can see that. We are leaking right there. So this piece of rubber is not doing a good job sealing the engine up. So let me just take a second. I wanna redo this and we'll reset. We'll do both tests again. All right, let's give this another try. We'll start by pulling a vacuum. Try to bring it up to 15 inches of mercury. And yeah, we're holding this time. So that's a good sign. I actually could never build and hold a vacuum and it is rock solid steady. So let's just rotate the engine. You know, if it's a bad seal, potentially we might hit a spot where the pressure all leaks out. Now it is normal to see the needle move because I'm actually moving the piston up and down. But if we're not losing pressure, then it should balance back out. And in this case, we haven't lost anything. Still at 15 inches of mercury. So that is a good thing. You know, I think the issue here was just that the way I blocked off the engine was not adequate. And it's a good thing I caught that because I would have torn the whole engine down, put new seals in, only to put it back together and, well, still have the same issue. So now we're holding pressure at 11 PSI. Uh, last time we did this, the pressure was very, very slowly dropping. And in this case, it's holding steady. We're not losing any pressure. So yeah, that's good news. But I guess the question is, what's wrong with this engine? You need spark, fuel, timing, and compression. We tested the compression. It's excellent, no issues there. Uh, we do have spark. I swapped the plug out just to make sure that made no difference. Removed the spark arrestor to make sure the engine can breathe and that made no difference. Timing, I know timing is good because the engine will idle and if the timing was off, you know, I don't think we'd be able to rev the engine at all. When I turn the choke on, I can rev the engine up. So timing is not the issue. I think the issue has to be fuel you know, potentially we did have a vacuum leak on the intake. So, you know, I might make up a gasket with my own gasket material because it is thicker than the gaskets that I have. So it could be something as simple as that. You know, the other thing I'm kind of thinking about is the carburetor. This is the original one that came on the machine. It is a clone. The other carb I tried is also a clone. Granted, this did run the engine quite well when we tested it earlier. And the other carb I know works well too. So yeah, just because it's a clone, you know, doesn't mean it's bad. Although I have had very bad experiences in the past where 
I've kind of ruled out the carburetor, chased everything else, only to come back, put an OEM carb on, and everything runs perfect. So this is pretty suspect. But before buying the OEM part, let's just put in a brand new gasket with thicker material. We'll tighten everything back down, give it one last chance. If it fixes it, great. If not, I think I'm going to get an OEM carb. This is the gasket material that I have, and this is the gasket I have for that carburetor. And when comparing the two, you know, visually, they look to be the same size. So I'm not really sure there's a purpose to making another gasket when this one seems to be fine. So, you know, I double checked the thickness just to make sure. And the gasket I have cut up already is pretty close to 31 thousandths of an inch thick. And the gasket material that I have is closer to 30 thousandths. So it's actually a thousandth thinner than what I already have. So yeah, there's no point in making a gasket. I think this one will be fine. So let's just get this back to normal. We'll try starting it again. And I'm assuming we're not going to see a change. So assuming it's still running poorly, you know, maybe we'll get that exhaust off of there and try it again. All right, let's give this a try. I've got the ignition on, choke on. I'm gonna try making some adjustments to the carb. I was fiddling with the needles earlier. You know, potentially they're out of adjustment now. So I'm gonna open up the pilot a little bit. Try that.
And fortunately, putting that new gasket in there made absolutely no difference. We still can't get this to rev up. So I tried it again, this time without the air filter, just to make sure 100% we don't have a restriction there. So I think at this point, we need to get the exhaust off and just try this again. All right, we'll try this again. Probably don't want to do it for too long. You know, I could see this plastic potentially melting. So the ignition is still turned on. And yeah, the needles are probably in the wrong position, but let's try it. See what we get. Kind of running out of ideas on this one. You know, I think everything is pointing to carb issues. And I know I've said this before, but it's a clone. And clones can waste a lot of time. But one last thing I'm going to do before ordering the correct part is actually get it idling again. I'm going to spray around here with carb spray, see if the engine speed changes at all, which could indicate we do have a, a vacuum leak somewhere. Uh, a couple other things I'm not sure if I mentioned. There is a new fuel filter in there. I have pressure tested the line. That is fine. And I actually threw in a brand new spark plug just to rule that out as well. And none of that's made a difference. So let's get it started one last time. We'll see if we can find any leaks. So just to clarify what I'm going to be doing here, I'm just going to spray a bit of carb cleaner around where this gasket is. Also right here where this insulator meets the engine. And if we have a leak, it's gonna suck that fuel in and bog the engine down or stall it. And that, if it happens, would be a sign that we do have an issue over here. So let's get it started and try it. There it is. That is the throttle shaft that's leaking. And yeah, I would say that's a build quality issue. So we need an OEM carb. I think that's the issue here. So let me pause it. We'll get that ordered. And hopefully when you see this again, it'll actually rev up. So it's been a couple weeks and I finally have what I need, at least I hope it is. It's a Walbro HD-4-1. And you know, I bought this on eBay. It was advertised as new old stock, never installed on a machine. So hopefully this will fix it because the leaf season is coming to an end pretty quickly. Now this cost about $72, a lot more than the clone that's on there now. And believe it or not, this was the cheapest one that was listed. Uh, the most expensive was actually $300 plus $50 shipping. So I'm guessing there may not be too many of these left for sale. Anyway, I hope this fixes it. I'm not going to torture you by watching me install this again, but I'll get it installed, turn the camera back on, pull the engine over, and hopefully this thing runs like it should. All right, let's give this a try. Got the ignition on. The throttle partially engaged and the choke is on. 
Now, assuming it starts, it's going to be a struggle to get the choke off in time, but we'll leave it on for now. We'll worry about that later. Open up that low speed jet a little bit. Oh. Let's turn the choke off. And open up that low speed a little bit more. Try it with the choke off. Nope, I need the choke on. Opened up the pilot a little more, the low speed jet. I think it's acting the same way. Nope. I've got to say, this one has me stumped. At this point, I have pretty much eliminated everything as the problem, yet the problem still exists. You know, I just double checked my work as far as the tank vent goes. There's no issue there. You know, I tested the line to make sure it could build pressure and hold a vacuum, and that passed as well. So the line is good. Uh, the fuel filter is also good. 
you know, everything on the intake side for the fuel is good. You know, of course, we've eliminated the carburetor at this point. We've tried one OEM and two clones, and we did a pressure test from basically the carb side of the insulator to the exhaust port, and we could build and hold pressure and pull a vacuum. So, yeah, um, there's really not much more left. Just to make doubly sure I blew through the exhaust, there is no obstruction. You know, the engine can breathe without issue, and you can kind of see the piston right there. You know, I took an up-close look at it while turning the engine over. It looks perfect. So really, you know, I think my gut is telling me that we have an issue with the base gasket, given all this oil coming down. It's got to be that. So I'm going to pull the jug, replace that gasket, and we'll try it again. So I think the big question is here, can I take the jug off and replace the gasket without disassembling the whole machine? And I think that is a bit of an unknown. It looks like the insulator does need to come off here. And unfortunately the lift table's in use and so is the workbench. So I think we'll be doing this one on the ground. felt pretty loose and so did that one I think these are supposed to be actually I have to double check I want to say like 80 inch pounds about they all came out very easily get that spark plug out Things look pretty good in here. The rings are not stuck. This is the exhaust side, nice and clean. And of course the other side looks just as good. So let's just check this real quick for up and down movement and there's none. And of course side to side, there's a little, but that, that looks healthy to me. Now the base gasket, you can see it's just covered in oil especially over here, like on the outside and even back here. So yeah, it's, it might be this. Let's see if we can get it off without getting any junk inside the engine. That was pretty easy. And in case you're wondering, that is not a crack. This is a split case. So there's actually a gasket between kind of the front and the back. So that is another possibility where we could be leaking. But given that it's dripping down the side, you know, tells me it's, it's most likely coming from the base gasket. this ends up being it. I'm going to kick myself for not doing this sooner.
and they do make specialized ring compressors for two strokes. I don't work on a lot of two strokes, so I don't have that. So you just have to be careful that you don't break a ring. All right, we're back together enough to try this out. So let's give it a few pulls and hopefully we get some good news. All right, ignition's on. Give it a bit of throttle. Let's see where the choke is. All right, choke is on. Let's put the glove on. That was it. It was just a bad base gasket. You know why it passed the pressure and the vacuum test? I don't know, but I should have trusted my eyes. There was a lot of oil coming from that area. And when I took those bolts out, they seemed quite loose. So I think that ultimately is what led to this problem. Anyway, there are still some leaves falling. So I'm gonna pause it here. We'll get the air filter, the air box cover back on, the spark arrestor and the outer plastics and we'll get this outside, hopefully for the final test. All right, pretty much ready to go. It is all back together. And I did restart it after putting the air filter on. Uh, that did richen it up, so I had to tweak the needles a little bit more. But I think we should be good to go. And we have plenty of leaves. At this point, most of them are on the ground instead of up on the trees. So let's hopefully get it started and make sure everything is good.
I was beginning to wonder if this one was going to beat me. And I'd say it almost did. You know, I really couldn't find a problem with this machine other than the intake leak on that clone carburetor. And, of course, that ended up not being the issue. It was a bad base gasket. And like that, the engine could not build pressure or pull vacuum when it needed to, and it threw off the air-fuel mixture. Anyway, now that that's replaced, it's running at 100%. And I would say doing a very good job. So I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.